Hello. So this one's going to be a change up. Um, it's going to be about my hitchhiking days. Uh, so <clears throat> it was like the uh, the spring. And in the spring and summer of uh, 98, uh, so um, my oldest brother, he had went to the military and my second oldest, you know, he went to college and he went to the military and, you know, I had gotten out of school myself and uh, I got out early, uh, so my oldest brother, you know, he had went to college and he went off to the military. Um, my second oldest, you know, he went to college, and he went off to the military, and um, I got out of school a little bit early because, you know, growing up with uh, older brothers, man, uh, I. I I was doing stuff faster than everybody else because they were <clears throat> I had to play catch up so the same stuff that took them a year or two to learn I had to learn you know quicker it's just how it is when you're younger <clears throat> especially when you have so many siblings in a uh, sequential order you know back to back to back um, the but so I was out of school a little bit early and uh, I didn't quite want to fall suit to what they had done you know I was kind of the rebellious one the black sheep of the family you know um, and so I took it upon myself to uh, more or less just start walking you know um, and I, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody, but I had walked so much uh, in my teenage years, um, it kind of prepared me for hitting the road with my feet instead of a car, you know, <clears throat> and uh, it, it was probably a good four or five hundred miles uh, before I decided to even try and get a ride with anybody um, there was a hesitation there you know it was right around the 10th day 11th day um, <clears throat> it was following like a not so good night uh, I was at a truck stop out in uh, Hardin Kentucky I had went east and uh I met a trucker there and you know we talked and uh, he had a guitar and I could play a little bit of guitar you know so he uh, he said he'd, he'd take me with him I could sit and I could play guitar you know and he gave me a ride all the way down into the Smokies uh, Georgia side of Smokies man it was somewhere in the far northern part of Georgia like wherever this road was uh it just went into georgia for like 10 minutes or so and then it went right back into tennessee um and there was like a gas station up there and i wound up getting off up there because uh we were up there around uh one or two in the afternoon and i wanted to see sunset up there you know and so i stayed up there for sunset and i mean it was the most beautiful sunset uh, from this road where I was uh, you could just see mountains to mountains to mountains in all directions uh, it looking north was a little bit obscured but like if you looked south west or east it was like downhill you know in all the di all directions it was beautiful and um, <clears throat> so I should have camped there that night because I, I had went so far um, 
outside of anywhere I'd ever been. I didn't know anything about the area, you know. I didn't even know really where I was. Um, but there was almost no traffic, you know. And I had, I decided to go ahead and start walking. And I had walked down. The, the road just zigzags down through the mountains. And I couldn't tell you if I went to Georgia, Tennessee. I just started following this road down into the mountains, you know. And it came down into this valley. And I had probably been walking three hours, four hours, you know. And one car maybe had went by on this road I was on. And this, this, uh, this valley had like this, this creek off to the, the right of it. The way the road ran, it ran parallel with this creek, and the creek was on the right of it. And the road was on the edge of this, like, huge open field. I guess the floodplains to the, uh, the creek, you know, or river, or whatever it was. It was nighttime, so I couldn't really tell you. I just know there was a lot of water to my right. And you could, you could really see out across, uh, across this this field because the road went on this giant turn and you could just see uh, across it like if you were the the string on a bow and the road was the the bow itself the curve of the bow you could see straight across it like the string of the bow um, and I'm saying this because I saw I didn't know where the road went or anything I'm just walking down it and then way off in the distance up ahead, off to my left, um, I saw headlights, you know. And they're driving and driving and driving, and I'm walking and walking and walking, and it's like they weren't getting any closer. You know what I mean? And I'm going to back up because I want to explain. So, before this car in this valley you had the river on the right the road and the field if you looked up it was like you were it was like one of those NASA photos the way the Milky Way it, w it was just so bright and milky I mean there was every star imaginable was viewable um, there was no light noise there was no light interference no light pollution <clears throat> and off in the distance, I started seeing headlights. And I was walking, and they're driving. And, I mean, you could hear it, and you could see it. And it, it probably took them about ten minutes before eventually, you know, it went... And drove by me, you know. And... I could hear the motor, you know, and it was going and going and going and going and going and going. And then all of a sudden it started to slow down, so I turned around and started walking backwards, you know. And they did a U-turn in the road. And then started coming back towards me. They probably drove a half mile past me or more before they turned around. But, I mean, you could hear the, the vehicle over everything. And I didn't have anything else to pay attention to. So here I am, I'm walking backwards, and they're coming up on me. And you know, it, they were probably doing 60-ish, 50-60-ish. They had the same speed as when they were going by the first time. And um, they were probably 20, 30, I don't know, 50 yards away. Uh, when I started hearing this, like whistling flute type sound and it was like you know it was there there and like it was repeating you know and about the same time their their headlights flew by me I remember feeling a, a, a bunch of pressure in my chest and I was flying through the air my feet went out from underneath of me and uh, and I remember it was like I was 
staring up at the stars. And everything was in, like, slow mode. Um, uh, like, I know they drove past me, but the sound of them driving by me seemed to, like, reverberate as if they they had stopped moving and I'm floating and I'm looking up at the sky and I realized I'm kinda laying flat um, and I start seeing uh, shards of glass except it's kinda like floating too and uh, I remember thinking how bright uh, the reflections were on the corners um, and I guess that was from their tail lights because um, it was like really bright red <clears throat> and then um, I went into this like <clears throat> foggy state where, um, like, we were back in that, uh, railroad station, and I was back in the, uh, the 80s and 90s, uh, people had washing machines, but not that many people had dryers. You know, especially if you lived out in the country. Uh, the thing to do was you, you'd hang up your laundry. And uh, when mom would wash, you know, sheets and towels, um, that would be really cool for us as kids, especially when we were younger. Um, we'd go out there and run around and hide in the sheets and towels and, uh, you know, pop out and scare each other. The, the memory I have between uh, the stars and waking up is uh, one where one where we were running around uh, playing hide and go seek in them sheets and towels at that old railroad station uh, that clothesline had had three lines on it and it had uh, three posts so you had a post on each end and one in the middle and you know three lines coming to in between each one and, uh, and I remember it was a bright and sunny day and we were out there <clears throat> I was trying to find somebody um, and then uh, I started coming to and I woke up to these, uh, there was this woman and this guy over top of me and they just kept asking me, are you okay? Are you okay? And at first I could have swore, uh, it was my mom and dad. It was just so weird, you know, and, uh, they just kept asking if I was okay. And, uh, they were saying, pick them up, pick them up, are you okay? And I remember saying yes, and, um, <clears throat> I came to, and they were, they were helping me sit up, and man, the back of my head was hurting so bad, I like, I like, put my hand up there, and it was sticky, uh, it was sticky, and my chest hurt so bad, dude, it was like, they had, when the truck drove by, they threw a beer bottle out. And that beer bottle hit me right in the middle of my chest. And knocked me about, you know, five, six feet through the air. It hit me at about 60 miles an hour, you know. And you could see where it hit me. Because, uh, there was glass all over. Like, past my feet, about four or five feet from where I was laying uh, you could see where the bottle hit me and uh, <clears throat> I had like a huge bruise it was so hard to breathe I had like this huge like 
busted spot on the back of my head. I had a pounding headache. I didn't know where I was. Uh, the sun was just coming up. And these people were picking me up. I didn't have no choice but to go with them. You know. And uh, they took me. Dude the sunrise. It was like they took me back up the mountain. You know. Because I remember watching the sunrise. They, I was sitting in the back of their pickup truck. With like the lady. And she just kept saying. You'll be alright. You'll be alright. I remember that. And they, they took me up this hill up this dirt road through this fence to their house man and uh it was so cool um they had like a huge fence around their house and uh there was still like the sun was still coming up and there was probably uh eight or ten people when we pulled up they were sitting around this huge bonfire and we pulled up and all these people came around and they like uh, it felt like I was just I floated to the uh, the living room uh, they took me into their house you know and they all carried me it was it was crazy and they put me down and like I hadn't really eaten that well in a couple days you know and I mean, one of them was a doctor, and one of them is a nurse, and one of them is, like, they're all, like, these professional-type people, and, like, they were the nicest people ever, and, um, they wound up, uh, I don't remember much about other than floating into the house, um, and everybody introducing themselves, and it was all just these waves of emotions, because, uh, they took my clothes off and they were cleaning me and doing this you know and they were explaining how they were doctors and stuff and they they bandaged my head they they uh checked my chest they they bandaged my chest um i don't remember really any of that i woke up and it felt like the the scene in um <laughs> lord of the rings when frodo wakes up you know and uh, Rivendell because I mean it was like noonish man and sun was super bright this was like this geodesic dome and they had all these skylights on it and all this light was coming down into this house and like they had bandaged my wounds and I felt you know way better um, they, they fed me I stayed there for like four or five days I'm not going to mention anybody's names, but uh, they were the nicest people I, I could have met in that situation. I'll tell you that. Because um, <clears throat> I think I was more or less just left for dead, man. And, uh, I know they didn't take me to a hospital, but they might as well have because I got treated probably better than if I was in a hospital. I hope you enjoyed this content. Thumbs up and like, comment and share. Um, subscribe if you already hadn't subscribed, that'd be cool. Um, and hit that notification uh, bell. Thanks. So I'm working on getting Patreon up and going. And um, I, I want to say thank you to my Patreon members. Um, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so thank you. And this part is for my Patreon members. Um, I appreciate you.